So I was just thinking that um, it took me quite a while to get to the place where I could feel that I trust my, well, not my instincts, but my intuition. I always had a feeling that I was, sounds a bit corny, meant for more than just a corporate job. Um, and that it always had to be something almost like greater, but something that would make me, I don't know, make my soul feel alive. And I, when I started to have sessions with you, I recently restarted writing again. And I used to write when I was a little girl. And when oh. I was like 14, I sat behind my mom's typewriter and I clearly heard you have to write a book and it freaked me out because I didn't, there was no one in the room and I stopped writing because I was like, I don't know what to write about. So I pushed it away until I um, got a divorce and I started writing my emotions and everything that was blocking me. And then I uh, did the sessions with you and I started writing more and last year i published a book but it yes. took me, yeah it took me like mm. well, more than six years to get to a point and not question what i'm doing is the right thing yeah it's um well some i've heard this from many people um that sometimes you're hearing that inner voice or even a voice that it's some somehow coming to you or through you somehow it comes through the etheric body but um it can be a bit daunting because it's like a voice from beyond uh what we know our mind is you know it's not really a thought we can feel that it's not a thought and we can be uh not knowing how to the how to is sometimes what is even more daunting for people is uh, you can feel that, yes, this is my desire, but how do I start? Where do I get started? Where to begin? What about what happened before? Should I just abandon this or that? Start fresh. Um, I encourage everyone, start fresh for 2024. But you bring up some very good points because there is another piece to that, and it's what we commonly call people pleasing. Yeah, because that was actually, I was going to say the biggest thing for me. How's my Indonesian father going to react? How is this person going to react? How are my friends going to react? So, and I tend to, well, my mom used to call it foot in mouth disease because I blurt things out, you know, that were inappropriate or, you know, <laughs> um, on the forefront of my mind. But I would get a, a like a bit stoic. People say, what are you writing about? Well, I'm just writing stories. And it would make me feel so uncomfortable. But I also learned on this journey that yeah, we cannot think about how others uh, are going to react. We can only do our thing and then be in connection with their spirit if we need something sorted and then let it play all out. So, yeah, sure. that was the people pleasing was a, a big one. Yeah, I think women, us as women, feel it twice as much as men do sometimes or in a different way um, where, you know, we're just, we should get along, you know, and just have our plan B. And this is actually our plan A, which is our ascension, our twin flame ascension. So your writings have led to some really, really profound experiences for yeah. you. Yeah, exactly. Because basically what I'm doing through my writing is what you are teaching us is retrieving parts of myself from all over the universe and other lives. And it has uh, learned me 
I've learned to write in a way that I can relive the parts uh, of lifetimes and then by writing it now and understanding it, I can conclude those things. And some part yeah. of love comes back to me from my twin flame. Yeah, it concludes, you can bring closure to it and even beyond you're healing both of you through it. Yeah. And he's just as adventurous as you are. And the thing is, how I notice these things, how the is that all of a sudden I don't have a fear to be on escalators, for instance. I used to be af afraid to go on escalators and I love traveling. So um, that was a big one for me, like walking around not to do those things, but all of a sudden thinking, hey, I'm not afraid anymore. So yeah, these are some of the really deep things we touch on with psyche work because it's so far beyond psychology, which is more of the mind, the mental, emotional body. And the deep psyche carries a lot of the deepest wounds that you share. And I mean, we don't know maybe without, you know, digging that a bit, where does that even originate from? But the beautiful part is it's gone. The phobia is gone. The fear is gone. Free to love and travel uh, throughout the world, yeah which is one of the objectives of having a brand new body and why are we doing this? So we're not carrying all that past garbage and wounds and trauma with us. Yeah, it's quite amazing, actually. And the more you work with it, the more amazing things happen. Yeah. yeah. Now, you said something interesting about your, you have an Indonesian dad. Yeah. And um, first of all, dads look at things one way uh, differently than moms do. But uh, sometimes culturally we're carrying, you know, in those things that we grow up with that we also have to like break some of the patterns. I, I hate to call it programming. I just, I hate that expression. But But there are patterns of behavior and, you know, um, there are things we all have, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and uh, a big of a big thing in the Indonesian community, and I think a lot of Asian and probably a lot of other others as well, because sometimes yeah. you go to Spanish and you think, oh, there there are similarities also, but it's the people pleasing. It's like the respect, and you know, you don't you don't say things straight to someone's face because you don't want someone to lose face. But then I had an English mom and she was taught like, you, you speak your mind and you be honest. <laughs> so yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My mother's Polish and she has that bossy Polish woman thing and yeah. the men were stubborn and the men sometimes wouldn't say anything and they bottle up their emotions and they were yeah. world-class grudge holders you know, yes. uh, would be like, Bruno didn't give me back this tool. And that would go on for five years. He kept the tool on purpose because he hates me. He kept the tool on purpose because he wants to thwart me, you know, whatever, whatever was made up in their heads. And um, we're breaking those patterns when we break these deep things. And when, you know, a lot of it comes for you through dream time. Yeah or that's a, a much deeper part of your process, the dreams of the emotional body. That's what I call it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, do you want to deepen your gifts, your intuitions and learn from us and learn how to do it? And even better in your day in and day out life, like Marsha has, like I do, you know, where you don't have to say no or do all this psychic defense. You remove the stuff. It's not there to hinder you or limit you. And you're free to go about the universe. That's what I call yeah. it. <laughs> That's an excellent way to describe it. Yeah. So um, how often do you get back over there to visit family? Uh, well, most of my family lives here. Uh, okay. but 
when I used to work in the corporate world there, I would go there every year. I haven't been there for three years, but I went six years in a row. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny when you go back to your roots and you're not even born there, because when you get there, you understand parts of yourself. Yes. I could totally understand some things when I got to Europe and my family is from Europe and uh, different parts of it, but yeah. And it's, it's, it's nice to be able to enjoy the good parts of those roots and not the hindrances of the traumatic parts of those roots. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, we hope that you'll join Marsha and me in our upcoming uh, monthly coachings. Um, have one-on-one -on -one coaching or a session to help you to get rid of your patterns, your and integrate the brand new body and learn how to do this on a daily basis. We have an easy daily routine for you to follow. And we're going to be back with more in 2024. And thanks so much, Marsha. We Thank hope to see you there, everyone. Bye. Bye.